فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد صلى الله عليه وسلم موسى سيد أبو موسى العشري You were endowed with a mizmer from the mizmers of the Prophet Dawood, peace be upon him. Here, the Prophet ﷺ said to Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, who narrated this hadith? He himself narrated it. He said that the Prophet said to me, لَقَدْ أُوْتِيْتَ You have been given, Abu Musa, مِزْمَارًا مِنْ مَزَامِيرِ آلِ دَوُدْ Mizmar means what? A flute. But here it means a tune from the tunes of Nabilahi Dawood. Dawood's voice was beautiful, extremely beautiful. He had a very beautiful voice. Nabilahi Dawood. And you know the Zabur, the book that Dawood had was called Zabur, right? Zabur was only a, a book of dhikr. It wasn't ahkam one in there. It didn't contain ahkam. So it was only dhikr. So he used to, only, he used to read them. He used to what? He used to read it with a beautiful voice. Nabilahi Dawood. So Abu Musa al-Ash'ari hasn't got all of the voices of Dawood. Dawood is still better. But he said, Utita, Mizmar, Min Mazamiri Ali Dawood. The Mizmar, the voice in the melody and his tunes were very different and they were large in number. Dawood alayhi salam. But Abu Musa only has one. And that is itself is amazing, beautiful that he had. This shows you that it's, the, it's permissible at times for the person to say to somebody when they feel like that they are being wronged. Uh, a person is allowed to sometimes mention their virtues. Some people say, I, I don't want to write my own CV. Like, I, would, I don't want to get a job because I'd have to praise myself. Ah. And Allah said in the Quran, It's permissible for you to write. And it's all to, you're allowed to also write your biography and tell people where you studied and whatnot. That's no problem with that. There's no problem. Rather, the Prophet he did that himself. Did he not say to Ansar, "Alam ajidkum dullalan fahadakum Allahu bi"? Did I not find you guys misguided and Allah guided you all through me? Huh? So the person can do. Nabi Allah Yusuf, what did he say? What did Nabi Allah Yusuf say? إِجْعَلْنِي عَلَىٰ خَزَائِنِ الْأَرْضِ إِنِّي حَفِيظٌ عَلِيمٌ That's crazy in yourself. He said, I'm alim, I have knowledge. Hafiz, I can safeguard things. صح? Sometimes it even becomes wajib for you to say it. Not just that you can say it, it becomes obligatory. صح? In some situations. نعم. Muslim also narrates that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said to Abu Musa, I listened to your recitation last night. Muslim read this hadith by way of Burayda ibn al Husayn. Husayn bin. Husayn. Fudallah ibn Ubaid. May Allah be pleased with the race. So the Prophet said, "Sua Abu Musa al-Ashari," and he said, "Abu Musa, I was listening to your recitation last night." Abu Musa al-Ashari said, "Ya Rasul, if I knew that you were listening, I would have beautified it even more for you. This shows you that you can beautify your voice for somebody." Yeah, I would have more beautified it even more for you. Hmm? For you, O Messenger of Allah. Now. Fudallah ibn Ubaid, may Allah be peace with him, narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah listens more closely to he who recites the Quran in a beautiful voice. Than does the owner of the songstress to his strong songstress. This was narrated by Ibn Majah. <coughs> the qayna is a, uh, the word so, so the Allah uh, Allah listens more to what? Ila Rajul Hasan was sawti bil Qur'ani a man whose voice is very good with the Quran min sahib il qaynati ila qaynati than a man who has a maghlama. What do you call it? Sheep or goats, whatever. What's the, what is the, what's the word that you use in English? Songstress. Yeah, what does that mean in English? It's uh, like a female singer. Al Mughaniya, naam, sahih. That's what it is. Abu Musa, may Allah be pleased with him, narrates that the Messenger of Allah said, 
I can tell the voices of a group of Ash'aris in the night as they enter their homes, recite the Quran, and I know their homes by their, their recitation at night, even without knowing which houses are theirs as they enter them by day. Bukhari and Muslim narrated this heavy. Because their voices were loud. Bukhari and Muslim both narrated that. And Musa has noticed people's recitation at night when they come, they're going into their houses, they're walking and they're reading Quran. Each one is reciting Quran and is entering his house. So I, he said, I know each and every one of them, when they enter their houses, who's who and who's reading it because of how loud their voices are. Ma'am? On the authority of Al-Bara, uh, Al Ibn Abi Azib, may Allah be pleased with him, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi said, Ornament the Quran with your voices. Abu Dawood and and Yasari and others narrated this hadith. Ibn Abi Dawood narrates that Ali, may Allah be pleased with him. So, Zayyinul Quran bi aswatikum. Beautify your recitation of the Quran, uh, beautify your voices with the Quran. Zayyinul Quran bi aswatikum. When you read the Quran, what should you do? Try to make your voice very beautiful to read the Quran. The Prophet said this, Zayyinul Quran bi aswatikum. Beautify. But you're not allowed to read the Quran in a, in a music way. Zayyinul Quran bi aswatikum. Beautify and make your voices beautiful. Are you with me? But don't read the Quran like music. Huh? Don't read it like music. ولذلك go to Abu Abdullah al-Qurtubi rahimahullah his tafsir, his ahkam al-Quran, the muqaddima, try to read it. He talks about this topic very well. He goes in. Because before we took the wording, the Prophet is saying, يَتَغَنَّا غِنَى يَتَغَنَّا بِالْقُرْآنِ He's doing ghina with the Quran. What does it mean, يَتَغَنَّا بِالْقُرْآنِ How do we reconcile that and not reading the Quran with his musical... Uh, صح? Are you there? How do you reconcile it? Because there's some recitations today when you listen to, like the other one, the one, no, the one we listened to last time in the car. That recitation is music. The man who was reading was actually, re it was music. It was what? It's music. This is not Quran. This is not Quran. The language truth. You can't read the Quran like that. Music has a rhythm. It has a, huh? Can you read the Quran like that? No, you can't. It's beautifying it means that you read the Quran correctly. Oh, yeah? Ibn Abi Dawood narrated that Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, heard the voices of people reciting the Quran from the Masjid and said, May they be blessed. They were the most beloved people of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There are many other narrations that affirm the practice of reciting the Quran at heart. So here Abu, uh, Abu, Abu Dawood an Ali radiallahu anhu Ali had Dajja tanasin fil masjid <laughs> Dajja means a noise <laughs> Like people making noises Which was a, means that they were reading Quran the, Then he said Tawba li ha'ulai Tawba li ha'ulai means khayru li ha'ulai May good be for those people That's what he said Kanu ahabba al-na'si ila rasulillah They were the most beloved people to the messenger of Allah The Prophet loved these people the Quran was on their tongue consistently and they were never, never let go of it. Now, There are other, many other narrations that affirm the practice of reciting the Quran aloud, as well as countless reports regarding the sayings and actions of the companions and those who came after them that also affirm reciting aloud. Such reports are so numerous and so popular that they hardly require mention. Again, it should be noted that reciting aloud should be practiced on condition that riya, self-admiration, and other heinous pitfalls are avoided. It is also necessary that reciting aloud not distract or muddle others in their praise or recitation. Indeed, some among the pious predecessors preferred reciting in a low voice for the sake of avoiding what we've just mentioned. Another thing is that your reading loud should not affect and harm jama'atun, a group of people bilabsi salatihim wa takhliyatiha alihim. You're one person and you're in a group of people and if you read loud, it's gonna make, they're going to mix up their recitation. They're in the middle of the prayer. They don't know what they're doing. You're reading too loud. That shouldn't happen. And because of that, some of the pious predecessors, they actually gave precedence to what? Not to read loud at all. 
And like they said that the person should actually read with a low volume. فعن الأعمش هي قال أعمش said. His name is Sulaiman ibn Mehran. أعمش is Sulaiman ibn أعمش. And it was they say he was أعمش because of his eyes. أعمش was what? He was cross-eyed. And so it is permissible to to call a person by something that is deficient in them if they are normal with it, they don't mind. So if they don't say no, they don't mind, okay, you call me if you want to. And it's a deficiency and they allow it, then it is permissible. So, yeah, Somalis are very good at that. Somalis are very, very good at that. They'll do that nicely. They, they'll, they volunteer for you. And it's hard because I realize when you fight against those kind of notions, it gets worse for you. Have you realized? So they will take a short person, they say Gabo. Gabo means shorty, short, short. So the guy is called short. And they will make sure that that name sticks. And the more you fight it, the more it's going to stick. The people enjoy it more. Somebody like when you fight something. It will, it will. If the guy is proper black, very, very dark, it's pitch black, they call him Noor. Yeah, it's the opposite. They say, yeah, Noor, Kale. <laughs> One, one of these, <laughs> one of them got stopped in the Saudi airport one time and they said, what's your name? He said, no, and he was very dark, pitch black. All his teeth was white and his eyes, dark, his hair, same color. So the Arab goes, no, huh? He said, no, it's me, no. So the Saudi said to him, if your no is like this, I don't want to see your, I don't want to see your dark ones. <laughs> yeah. So Somali, if they, if the person is born, born six months, they call him Da'is. That's like, it's seven months, so if he's not born basically nine months, that's his name. Everybody would know that you were born seven months. It's gone, that's a long time. You don't look like a, you know, but they'll make sure that name sticks. So they're very, very good at that. If the person doesn't mind, are you there? He doesn't mind. He says, I don't mind. No, it's not a problem. Then, what do you call it? Um, then you can't call them that. It then doesn't become a ghibah, it doesn't become backbiting. If the person says, I don't like it, don't call me it, then it falls under bi'salismul fusuku ba'd al-iman wa man lam yatub fa'ulaika humu zalimun. You can't call a person by a name that he doesn't approve of. But a lot of the salaf, but if you're explaining a person and there's, you don't know the name, and there's no way to say, explain that person, who? A brother that was there that day. Which one? Okay, the fat chubby one. And you have to do it to explain who it was, the chubby brother. Which one? The short one. No, oh, there was two chubby short ones. <laughs> and you have to keep distinguishing it. In this angle, it is permissible. But you have to stick to the need that, that is needed from it. That doesn't fall under backbiting as well. Are you with me? But other than that, the person should not call a person by a name that they have not consented to. No. And Amish, may Allah have mercy on him, said, Amish was a very unique individual in his character. Sulaiman ibn Mehran al Amish, he was a very unique person in his character. This great scholar. They said he used to have a dog. Amish used to have a, a dog in front of his house. He never used to let the students come in. So one day his dog died. Qadrullah man shafa'al mat. Whether the students killed him or not, Allah alam. But the dog died, so he became very sad. And this was one of his ways to stop the students coming to him and take hadith from him. He was strong in hadith. Are you there? So what happened was, the dog died. And so A'mash said, Mat al-lidhi kani ya'mur bil the one that used to call to the good and pray, but the evil died today. He used to stop the evil from coming. <laughs> That's what he said. Even one time what happened to him was, Sulaiman ibn Mehran, what happened to him, his hair grew so much because he boycotted the people. And because he was cockeyed, he couldn't see those who were around him. And he never used to allow anyone to sit next to him. Never. He just used to never let it. If somebody did, he'll kick him. Get away. What are you sitting here for? Who gave you permission? 
his manners and his etiquette and the way he was was rough, rough. So his hair grew, it became big, 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 and it became very long. And so he said, and this was all due to, he, he didn't want to go to no one, he didn't want to go to the barbers, he didn't want to go to anyone. So one, ki, one person saw him one day and he said to him, Sheikh, I'll cut your hair and no one's going to ask you a question. I'll make sure you get looked after. Really? He said, yes. He said, okay, no one's going to come to me. No one's going to ask me for anything. Are you going to make sure my hair's cut and everything? He said, yes. His hair became too long. So he took him, when his hair was halfway, and he cut half, and the other half is left, he couldn't stop. And he said, I have a question to ask you. <laughs> he stood up, um, Suleiman ibn Mehran, and he left, and he stayed a month with half of his hair. فَبَقِيَ شَهْرًا He remained half of his hair. Also, he never used to be able to go home. Somebody would always have to take him, grab him by the hand, because again, he couldn't see properly. So one student said, Sheikh, I'll take you home today. Are you sure? Yeah, I'll take you. He took him. He went through a road that was a normal route, and he brought him somewhere outside that wasn't where Suleiman ibn Mehran's house was. And he said, Sheikh, I'm not going to take you home until you narrate for me. He said, what do you mean? He said, I'm not going to let you go home until you tell me hadith of Rasulullah. So he told him. He wrote everything. So they came. He said, okay, take me home now. So he grabbed him by the hand. And when he came to his house, he screamed. He said, ah, Hatif, he robbed me. And what did he rob? That's my log he's got in his hand. It's got all my stuff on there. So they went to the student, they checked, they had, he had nothing. What he did was, when he was on the way, he passed it over to somebody to take it off. Keep it for me. <laughs> so there's nothing that he had on him. So he's ajaib stories that are mentioned from him. Sulaiman ibn Mehran. Rahimahullah ta'ala. Allah has He said, I entered upon Ibrahim while he was reciting from the Mus'haq when a man asked him for permission to enter. He, Ibrahim, then covered the Mus'haf and said, I don't want this man to think that I recite all the time. Sa'am, na'am. So, A'mash rahimahullah, a man entered onto him. <coughs> he said, دخلت على إبراهيم وهو يقرأ في المصحف فاستأذن علي رجل فغطاه وقال لا يرى أني أقرأ كل ساعة. Are you with me? Sulaiman ibn Mehran is who? Al-A'mash. Who is... Um, Ibrahim here, Ibrahim al nakhai The thing with Ibrahim al nakhai was what? He was one-eyed. Sulaiman ibn Mehran was cross-eyed. So one day they were both standing together. Together they were talking and Ibrahim al nakhai said, Sulaiman ibn Mehran, Amash, Amash, let's just go home. Because when people see us, they're going to say the cock-eyed and the one-eyed are chatting. And they're going to backbite us and this is going to make them accumulate so many sins. He said, no, 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 this, this is Amash. No, let them backbite and let them gather every sin the arrows on the face of this earth. Uh, that's what he wanted. So Ibrahim al he he said, uh, Al-A'mash said, Al-A'mash said, دخلت على Ibrahim, I entered onto Ibrahim, يعني Ibrahim al he was reading from the Mus'haf. فاستأذن علي رجل الإيمان asked permission if he can enter onto him. فغطاه, so he covered his Mus'haf, and what he said is, لا يرى هذا أني أقرأ كل ساعة. I don't want this man to come and think to himself, what? That I read every hour and every time. Pay attention, my beloved brothers and sisters. Allah. Something like this happened to who? Something like this happened to one of the tabi'een. Mm -hmm. In the long hadith of Hadith Sahih Muslim, Hadith Ibn Abbas, where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi where the Prophet Sallallahu you know the hadith, that a person will enter Jannah بغير حساب ولا عذاب without any accountability. Do you know that, how, how that story started? Ibn Abbas, he said to the companions, he said to one of them, من رأى منكم who were from amongst you last night saw the eclipse, right? And then one of the tabi'in said, أنا, me. I did. Look what he said straight after that. I saw it last night. Mid, last night. وَلَكِنِّي بَتْ لَمْ أَكُنْ فِي صَلَاةٍ I was a prayer. عَلَيَا لَا يَتَوَهَمْ When I looked and I saw the eclipse last night, I saw it but wasn't because I was praying. Mm, don't feel think that. وَلَكِنِّي لُذِغْتُ But I was bitten by an animal. 
And so he said, what did you do? La, la, la. This is Ibn Abbas, Sa'id ibn Jubair, Sa'id ibn Jubair. They told Sa'id ibn Jubair asked this question. Sa'id ibn Jubair asked this question, not Ibn Abbas, sorry. So he said, Sa'id ibn Jubair said, what did you do then? And he said, I asked for Ruqya. And he said, who told you this? And he said, I asked Sha'bi. And he said, what did Sha'bi say to you? And he told him what he told him. And he said, greatness be for the one who stops at what he hears. Meaning good, what you did was you had evidence, you took it. وَلَكِنِّي سَمِعْتُ بِنْ عَبَّاسِ يَقُولَ هَادِ بِنْ عَبَّاسِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ سَلْ يَأْتِي نَبِيٌ A Prophet will come the day of judgment and this and then another Prophet will come and this and then صح? Then he said the hadith وَيَأْتِي نَبِيٌ And then a Prophet will come وَلَيْسَ مَعَهُ أَحَدٌ وَالنَّبِيُ وَمَعَهُ رَجُلٌ أَوْ رَجُلَانِ And then فَيَأْتِي Then will come a people يَسُدُّ الْأُفُقُ They will cover the horizon, all of it. And then the Prophet would say, I, with, I thought it was my people. فَيُقَالُ لِي It would be said to me, هَذَا مُوسَى وَقَوْمُهُ This is Musa and his people. وَلَكِنْ انظر. But look towards the other direction. And then I see a people who are larger in number, more in number. Quantity is high. And then it said to me, هَذَا قَوْمُكَ That's your people, Muhammad. فِيهِمْ From amongst them is what? سَبْعُونَ يَدْخُلُونَ الْجَنَّةَ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابٍ وَلَا عَدَى 70,000 who are going to enter Jannah without any hisab or adab. Bayhaqi narrated a powerful hadith, which is that the Prophet said, وَلِكُلِّ سَبْعِينَ أَلْفِ Every سَبْعِينَ أَلْفِ From those 70,000, there is another 70,000. So the number is very large. These people are going to enter Jannah بِغَيْرِ حِسَابٍ وَلَا عَدَابٍ They're not going to be accounted and nor are they going to be questioned. Sah? Then the Sahabas, they sat amongst themselves and they said, Who are they, Ya Rasulullah? Now this Prophet is gone. They are amongst themselves, they who are these 70,000 who are going to enter Jannah? No question, nothing, just straight to Jannah. How? Who are they? So a group, group of said, The ones, it's us, the companions, we befriended the Prophet. Another group of said, said la, la, la. It's the ones who are born Muslims. Yeah? The ones who are born? Look at the virtue. Being born as a Muslim is a virtue. You find some people saying, I'm a reaver. They love to jump on that. Are you there? I never I wasn't practicing properly, so I'm a reaver. Yo, oh, <laughs> you do takfir of yourself. <laughs> so, it's not nice. Be happy to say I was always a Muslim. Alhamdulillah. So, are you with me, brothers? Have you guys sensed that? People, some people just like the idea of saying, I'm a reaver. Huh? It's not good. You're, you're born as a Muslim. All your life you will be in a Muslim, it's a virtue, man. Anyways, the point is, Islam. Some Sahabas actually, the reason why they brought this suggestion is because of virtue in it. They wouldn't have suggested it if it wasn't virtuous. Everybody mentioned something, and the Prophet heard their voices, and he came out and he said, Who, What are you guys talking about? And they told the Prophet, and he, the Prophet said, they don't lie astarqood, they don't ask for ruqya. They don't go to ruqya center and say, oh, do ruqya on me. Or they don't ask anyone to do ruqya on them. Number one. Wala yaktawood, they don't do kay. Kay means they don't burn themselves. Quarterous. Huh? Quarterization. They don't do that. La yaktawood. Wala yaktayyaroon, they're not superstitious. Like, there's always this black cat that's in our back garden. So I always see it, I'm like, whoa. Whoa, bad news, this house is going to collapse. What is this black cat? Why is it always here? Ah. Or a black crow comes to your door and it goes wah, wah, wah. I mean that sounds like a frog, but... And it flies off and it goes, nah, this is what? You say, you know what, this house is proper cursed, man. Today I'm definitely not going to leave. Today I'm definitely... And that's how the kuffar were. They would see that happen and this is bad, this is bad luck. I don't know about you guys, but some, some old generation, when their hand starts to feel itchy, especially my mom, she goes, Allah, money's gonna come, money's gonna come. She scratches it, she goes, Mwah. Have you guys seen that before? You guys not seen that? You've seen that? Have you seen that? Yeah, you guys don't have that connection with your parents, maybe, innit? 
But it's true. Some people, some people. It, super, it comes different forms, shapes. What's the What's the funniest one you guys have seen? Tea leaves. How, how is that? Someone drinks tea. Hey. So they somebody drinks tea, okay? And what they got? The leftovers of the tea. The leftovers of the tea. They. So just because of the way that the, the tea, you think that okay, okay, that's what's going to be good or bad. What else? Milk falling on the floor. Yeah. Milk falling on the floor. Milk falling on the floor. It's bad. If you break a mirror. For seven years. So if a glass breaks, that's it. Mirror, mirror. You walking? Walk under a ladder or like. Walking under a ladder. Or open an umbrella indoors. Or open an umbrella indoors. They need takfir. Oh, these are the white people. No, I want the Muslim ones. I've heard all of those kufar ones. I'm saying that these Muslims do this. Spiders. What about spiders? Uh huh. It will come to you. It will curse you. The more blessing it is. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Spiders. Are you? Anything else you had? Go ahead. Come, come to the Somali community to show us some stuff. I know what someone who I saw this Eid, like, paid it. Hey? And I asked why was that? It's the first payment. So they think because you paid it. The first payment. The first payment. So when, when you give them, when you buy something from the first payment, they kiss it. They, if it's a lot, then the, the, that day there's going to be a lot of money. Yeah. If it's little, that the money's going to be a lot. Yeah, they believe that. That's what they say. What about you? Sunnah in your house every day, all day. <laughs> Yeah, Kitab Sunnah, Kitab. That was my house. Oh. <laughs> uh, the worst one I've heard. The worst one? In Pakistan. Do you know um, men that imitate women? Uh huh. Then they go out and Yeah, I've heard that one as well. <laughs> the, guy, the men that dress like women in Pakistan, when they come next to you, you have to give them money. You have to. If they curse you, you're finished. <laughs> the people are scared of. Yeah, I heard that from many people. Yeah? People invite them to wedding because they can curse you, yeah? Wallah. Yeah, so they don't curse you. They'll curse you if you don't invite them at the wedding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you just do this, <laughs> if you do this with the scissors, but you're not really cutting anything, that means you're cutting family ties. It's gonna be, it's gonna put a dent on the house. And if you if you um if you pour salt on the floor, uh -huh. on the day you don't pick up with your eyelashes. You're gonna have to pick it up with your. You had that one as well? Stop being so. <laughs> and like he's memorized it. He's like, shall I start? <laughs> dun, 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 dun. If you leave, you go on holiday. And you go on holiday? They make good and both under the Quran. <laughs> they make? Good and both under the Quran. Wow. <laughs> Even in secondary school, remember, you, I don't know about you guys, but my secondary school, Fort me in North London, we learned this thing which is that you never go under boards. Was it like that for you guys? Yeah. Boards, yeah, you never go under it. What was your reason that they told you when you were, when you were in secondary school? Of a man. Yeah, okay, that's what I heard as well. That's what they, that's not superstitious. That wasn't superstitious. That's just jahiliya, hamqa. Yeah. Mm. 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 That's it. Mm. But you see, that's the hadith. And they have what? They have tawakkul in who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. 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 Y
How do you distinguish between a tatayur and knowing things by experience? Just knowing that this person, okay, the body language, their face, the way they carry themselves, that this is going to come out from them. There has to be an evidence or experience of that what, you've, what you've seen beforehand that this situation is happening. So it has to be based on something that's basically put to the test. So, so some people, mashallah, they can tell. They look at a person, hmm, the body language, and the way they carry themselves, and the way they are, everything. And I'll tell you, this person is mukhlis, this person is not mukhlis, this person is this, this person is that, blah, blah. And they can put a, a strong point in place. Now, so, ala kulli hal, the reason I mentioned that story, that hadith, was because the Salaf, they never used to like to make people think, think, even that they were pious. They never used to like it. Damn. If they thought that their people might perceive them in a particular way, they would make sure that they tell them that that wasn't the case. No. Abdul Allah, Abdul Allah, Abdul Allah, Abdul Allah, Abdul Allah once narrated, I was sitting with the companions of the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him, and may Allah be peace with them, when someone among them said, last night I recited such and such, they replied, this is your reward for it. Those holding that opinion, that <laughs> Meaning you're not going to wait for a reward the day of judgment. Why do you have to tell the people that's what, trying, that's what he's trying to say? Why are you telling people that, that I'm actually well just on the matter? But if you're doing it to encourage others and there's another purpose behind it, then the fihi khayr. Adadu ala khayri ka If you're competing with somebody and you're learning with them and you're studying with them and you tell the sister, look sister, this is how much I memorized last night, how much did you memorize? Okay, I'm, I'm beating you, okay. Is, and then there's that competition going on, fihi khayr, that's, that's good. Okay. Those holding the opinion that recitation should be in a lowered voice take as proof the hadith narrated by Uqba ibn Amir. May Allah be peace with him. ibn Amir. Uqba ibn Amir. May Allah be peace with him. He said, I heard the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, He who recites aloud is like he who publicizes what he gives in charity, while he who recites quietly is like he who conceals what he gives in charity. This, narrate, this was narrated by Abu Dawood at Tindidi and Al Nasari at Tindidi classified it as Sahiri. At Tindidi, commenting on the above hadith, said, This means that a person who recites silently is better than one who recites aloud, because giving charity while concealing it is better than to give it while announcing it, according to the scholars. He also said the scholars have understood this to be the meaning of the hadith, as this will keep the reciter safer from falling into boasting, just as one who conceals his charity is safer against falling into boasting mm -hmm. than, than he who announces it. Mm -hmm. The above I mentioned hadith, uh, hadith uh, all agree with what we have ex explained at, at the beginning of this section, namely that if the reciter fears falling into that which he wants to avoid, bragging and self admiration then he should not recite it aloud. But if he feels safe against these pitfalls, then reciting aloud is much better. If the recitation is in a gathering, however, announcing it becomes more recommended for the reasons we have already mentioned. And so that the benefit extends to other individuals, and Allah knows best. Inshallah, we'll take a 15 minutes break, inshallah ta'ala.